you for joining me. I pray God's um, blessing upon you, Lord. We pray that you'll breathe upon us now as I go into my devotion, Lord. I pray that you will fill my heart with your blessings, dear Father. Inspire me as I go into your word, as I meditate on your word, as I feed on your word. I pray, God, that you open my eyes, open my hair, open my mouth, dear Father. Bless me now, I ask of thee, in your precious name, dear Jesus. Grant unto me the peace that passes all understanding, and Lord, that some heart will be blessed by thee today. Amen. Open mine eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that will unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open mine eyes illumine me spirit divine open mine hair that i may hear voices of truth thou sendest glare and while the wave not fall on my hair, everything falls will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open mine hair, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open mine heart illumine me speak with divine Yes, Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are there to open our hearts, to open our minds, dear Father, to give us clarity as we seek you, as we bow before you, Lord. It is so important that we kneel before you each day so that we can stand before any man. When we bow before you, and you authorize us, you give us the power and the strength and the courage. We need to have no fear. So, as uh, the saying goes, when you kneel before the Lord, you can stand before anything. So I encourage you this morning to kneel before your maker. Let us kneel before our maker. Let us bow before his presence. and. Thank him for having kept us through the course of the night and then awaking us up to see a brand new day. This day we have never seen before, we're never likely to see again. And we are grateful that God has spared us to see this day. Once again, I invite you to join with me as I go through um, day number 29 of my 40 days journey, spiritual journey of prayer and devotion. I implore you to join in to uh, be a part of the reading be a part of the discussion i am feeling so blessed so wonderfully good that i have begun this 29 days ago i have slipped up here and there but you know i am still going through it and i know that i am being blessed and at the end i shall be thoroughly blessed well equipped for service that god has for me
All right, today's topic is righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith. Yes, day 29. Righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith is simply looking to Jesus to manifest his righteousness, his righteous life of victory in our life. God wants us to look to Christ for victory, not to ourselves. Can I read that again? God wants us to look to Christ for victory, not to ourselves. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Taken from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. This is true righteousness by faith, and is God's will for every Christian. Oswald Chambers, a well-known Christian author, clearly presented this wonderful truth in the July 23rd reading of his daily devotional, My Utmost for His Highest. That's a title. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us sanctification. Let me go that again. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became from us sanctification. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, from the New King James Version. The life side, um, the heart wrote, Hoswell Chambers, the life side. The mystery of sanctification is that the perfect qualities of Jesus Christ are imparted as a gift to me, not gradually, but instantly, once I entered by faith into the realization that he became for me sanctification. Sanctification means nothing less than the holiness of Christ jesus becoming mine and being exhibited in my life let me go that again sanctification means nothing less than the holiness of jesus becoming mine and being exhibited in my life the most wonderful secret of living a holy life does not lie in the imitating jesus but in letting the the perfect qualities of jesus exhibit themselves in my human flesh sanctification is christ in you christ in me christ in us colossians 1 verse 27 it is his wonderful life that is imparted to me in sanctification imparted by faith as a sovereign gift of God's grace. Am I willing for God to make sanctification as real in me as it is in his words? His word rather. Sanctification means the impartation of the holy qualities of Jesus Christ to me. It is the gift of his patience, love, holiness, faith, purity, and godliness that is exhibited in and through every sanctified soul. Sanctification is not drawing from Jesus the power to be holy. It is drawing from Jesus the very holiness that was exhibited in him and that he now exhibits in me, in you, in us. Sanctification is an impartation not an imitation do you get that sanctification is an impartation not an imitation imitation is something altogether different something altogether different the perfection of everything is in jesus christ 
and the mystery of sanctification is that all the perfect qualities of Jesus are at my disposal. Consequently, I slowly but surely begin to live a life of expressive, expressibles, order, soundness, and holiness, kept by the power of God. 1 Peter 1 verse 5. Do you see the beauty of this truth? Our part is to look to Jesus in trust in faith, believe in God's promises to manifest Christ and his righteousness in us. Our only part is to choose to let this happen and believe it will happen. When unrighteous desires and temptations come, we are not to fight against them. We are to turn to Jesus who is living within us and to ask him to manifest his own righteousness. Hebrew 12 verses 1 and 2. Then we are to wait in faith, believing he will do it. Amen. When Christ is fully manifested in his people, then the earth will be enlightened with the glory of our character, with his glory, our character. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Revelation 18, 1. Then his people will be just like Jesus. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and we can put daughters into. Now are we the sons and daughters of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that we shall be like him. <laughs> but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. First John 3 verse 2. Then when he returns, they will be able to stand in the very presence of Christ in all his glory and not be consumed. This is God's promises to his children. And it will be fulfilled as we learn to look to Jesus in faith for this marvelous manifestation of himself in us. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Jude 24. This is marvelous. This is amazingly marvelous. I love this. You know, righteousness by faith. Day number 29. I got 11 more days to go to get out of the wilderness and to be uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit to move out and to do the work. The personal reflection and discussion. According to today's devotional study, what is God's will for every Christian? What is God's will for every Christian? What is true righteousness by faith? What is true righteousness by faith? Then describe in your own words what Oswald Chambers wrote. Describe in your own word what Oswald Chambers wrote. And the next, how do you plan to apply righteousness by faith to your personal life? How do you plan to apply righteousness by faith to your personal life? Prayer activities. Call your prayer partner and discuss this devotional with him or her. Pray with your prayer partner for God to continue to baptize each of you with his Holy Spirit. For God to bring revival into your life and his church. For God to lead you to let Jesus manifest himself fully in your life. So that you truly experience righteousness by faith in Christ alone. And finally, pray that God pray for the individuals on your prayer list. Include the following Bible verse in your prayer. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams of on the dry ground i will pour out my spirit on your offspring 
and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowing streams. Let me go that again. Isaiah 44, verses 3 and 4. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar tree by flowing stream. We are, we are as dry ground spiritually. Pour out your spirit on us and cause us to revive and grow into the fullness of Christ. Won't this be our prayer for today? Won't this be our, our meditation for today? That God will pour out His Spirit on us. You read the bow and your eyes are closed. Mighty Father, we thank you again for today. We thank you, gracious Heavenly Father, that Lord, we can live righteousness by faith, not of our own, not of any other external force, but Lord, we can live righteousness by faith as we believe that you are living in us, as we open the doors of our heart and invite you to take up residency in our heart, Lord, be Lord and master of our heart. And as you live inside of us, Father, we are able to live righteousness by faith. Help us to walk with you today and always in Jesus name. Amen. My friends, I say walk with God and let him walk with you. Be blessed and be a blessing. Have a great and wonderful day in Jesus. Amen. Man.